take one. I'm C. Terrawan Bonnie McCammond. I'm originally from Scotts Valley, California, uh, although I claim my hometown is Dixon, California. I joined the Navy when I was 17 while I was still a senior in high school. Uh, I originally was looking at it because after I did my ASVAB, I got contacted by the NROTC folks and they were offering scholarships and I did my scholarship package, barely missed getting picked up and decided I was going to enlist and go that route and try again. And once I was in and enlisted, I fell in love with it. I was out of the area, I was at a friend's house. We were having a, a celebration party. He was moving into a new house and it was a bunch of people I knew. It was yeah, a bunch of service members, a bunch of friends. You know, these were all people. You're really friendly. You're trusting. You know, everybody's having a great time. And it seemed like it was a night like everything else um, until, you know, I drank. I ended up crashing out on the couch. I woke up, God, I don't know, midnight, 2 o'clock in the morning. Everybody was asleep. One of the other attendees from the party, um, another Navy person, was on top of me and was assaulting me. And... I remember just completely freezing. You know, I was still, I will say, I was still intoxicated at the time. I was not fully conscious for all of what happened. It's like, he was there, he was telling me, you know, like, oh, you're really pretty, oh, you should really like this, oh, you know, the things that, that I'm gonna do to you the next time we get together, and I, like, in my brain, I'm just like, what? What, I don't even, get off of me. And then he was done, and then he crawled up back over to the couch he was sleeping on, went back to sleep, and I just, all I wanted to do was be gone. And ran up to my friend's room, locked myself in there for the night. You know, the next morning I'm trying to be really calm and get myself out of there as, with as little drama as possible because I was freaked. Like, I had been a, sa a then savvy advocate for a while. You know, this is something I'm supposed to be able to handle and in the moment. I couldn't handle it at all, you know. I didn't know what to do. I didn't want anybody to know. I wanted to go home, take a shower, bathe in bleach, and just not have had any of it happen. And I remember that morning, I'm get, I was getting ready to leave and getting out of there as quickly as possible. And he grabs me and he goes, "Hey, you know, can I get your number? I'd really like to see you again sometime. I really had fun last night." I was like, "Are are you kidding me? You're joking, right?" And then at that moment, it's like, you, you think this is okay. You think someone who is asleep anywhere, you know, whether intoxicated or not, it's like, you, you didn't think there was a problem with this. And I completely broke down. I couldn't tell anybody. I didn't tell the guy that I was seeing. I didn't tell my best friend. It was a year and a half before I would talk about it to anybody. Because, you know, it's like all the training in the world flew out the window because I was so violated. I fell apart and I don't have a right sometimes I feel to tell other people you know this is something that you need to bring forward if I'm not willing to tell my story and what I found as I started telling my story is that you know I expected to have some reaction from it what I didn't expect is for in one week for three males that I had been stationed with to all come forward and say you're so strong for telling this. I've never told anybody. Some of them, it had been years since their assault happened. Never told anybody. But I want to tell you because you understand it. It was hard, you know. I went through a lot of these things. It's like, the what could I have done differently, you know. Maybe I shouldn't have drank so much. Maybe, you know, something, anything. And like everything that people tell someone who has been raped that, oh, you know, you shouldn't have worn that, you shouldn't have been drinking so much, you should have gone with a buddy, all of these other things. But at the end of the day, it wasn't my fault. There wasn't anything I could have done that, that changed, that this person, that this other sailor, decided that it was okay to violate me as I'm passed out on a couch. We have to challenge that every single day and say, no, that's not okay, that's not what we're gonna do here. You know, I'm not gonna let you take her home, she's drunk. You know, I'm not going to take you home, you're drunk. Personal change affects other people. And once we speak out to other people, they speak to more people, and we'll see it change at the fundamental level.